Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Vision Temple of Praise this morning. I pray that it is well with your soul. The enemy wants to come and attack us, but we are here. So we give God glory this morning. Amen. 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 God thanks for our, a week that we've had of going through good times and bad times. But we just pray that Lord will lift us our hearts this morning. Just lift our hearts this morning as we come together in one accord and just sing God's praises. You know, the best thing to do when you're going through trials and tribulation is praise. Amen. Praise. Praise. Sing a song. Find a new song yes. to sing and you'll get through those Amen. battles. Amen. 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 So we're going to sing our first song. Awake. Zion awake. Amen. 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 Awake. I don't Uh, 
First Lady. Yeah. Greetings to the Major Temple of Praise this Sunday morning. Are we well? Yeah, yes. God is good. Isn't that? God is good. Amen. Yeah. I want to welcome Bye. our visitors this morning. Welcome the uh, bishop, pastors, um, the members, and children or child. <laughs> Amen. That is good. I need to call to service this morning. And it's from Psalms 121, uh, verses 1 to 2. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence come up my help. My help come up from the Lord, which made heaven and the earth. Amen. How many people know that the help comes from the Lord? Amen. Amen. May the joy of the Lord be your strength. At this time, I'm going to ask Pastor Val. Good to see you this morning, by the way. A pleasure. You just uh, bless us today. Prayer. Open up. Amen. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, we come before your presence this morning, Lord. Father, with thanksgiving and adoration and gratitude, Lord God. Father Jesus, there's so many things, Lord God, that could have happened to us. And Lord, even in sickness, you kept us in the palm of your hand. And so, Lord God, my Savior, we've got a right. The some writer said, the children of the rock, the children of the Lord have a right to shout and sing. Oh Father, so today as we come, Lord, although the body may not be well amongst us sometimes, Lord, but we know, Father God, that you kept our spirit, and that is well. And so we can say today, it is well. It is well. It is well. Hallelujah. In my soul. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence here that is ushering in the atmosphere, Lord, beyond these walls, Lord Jesus, out into the community, Lord. Oh, Father God, and in our world at large, send your divine spirit and angel, Lord, to minister to those that are, are, are oppressed today, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father God, I thank you that you're taking this service according to your will and your way, God. We thank you, God, that we are all united, Lord Jesus, in harmony, Lord God, all declaring that we've got the victory. We've already got the victory, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are who you are, that you say you are, Lord. And we take you at your words today, Lord Jesus. So thank you for taking over this service. Amen. 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 God bless you. Look at what I'm a, a hymn right now. Hosanna be. Uh, yes. I'm blessed with the Lord. Magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna be magnified the Lord. Oh, 
good. Amen. Are we blessed this morning? Jesus. 
Oh! 
Yeah, you do that to anybody. I don't have anything to share with us this morning. It's just an opportunity that we can give you to just say how good God has been this week. Amen. It's a wonderful God to be. He woke me up this morning. I'm here rejoicing in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. This week, praise God, I was not well in body. But today I'm standing in the presence of God, giving him praise and thanks for his healing touch upon my body. And praise God, amen. 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 God is good, isn't that? God is good, God is good. Everybody with a burning testimony, God is good. He woke us up this morning. Amen. And every morning. Amen. Amen. Minister to me 
That was my experience, the withdrawal symptoms, because my wife will tell you, I used to drink Pepsi as though it's water. And you suffer. But it was mind over matter and God strengthened me not to look at it to the degree where even today I have reduced that intake so much. I still get told off for drinking it. But what I used to do before, I don't do that anymore. Amen. Same things I used to do, I do them no more. Amen. 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 But are we fulfilling what our tasks are? We can do gimmicky things. And even as Christians, we do gimmicky things, you know. We do things to look good, you know. But one thing we don't do, are we doing what God has tasked us to do? And are we doing it 100%? Are we frightened of doing what God has given us to do? Or are we choosing to sit on the fence all the time? Where we are today, we are on the brink of a potential third world war. And I will tell you why we're on the brink. The previous two world wars commenced in Eastern Europe. World War I started as a direct result of the assassination of the Crown Prince in Sarajevo. I know that because I've been there and stood on the spot on the bridge where he was assassinated. And things went down and that happened. Poland, back in 1939, that led to World War II. Ukraine is also in the same region. That's the point I'm making. At times a very volatile region. But because of one man's crave for power, because of one man's crave for wanting things to be how it was, they've decided that they're going to invade. But is what he is doing is that better than what some of us are doing today? Many of us use our mouth to go at people. Many of us stand in the way of progression because we don't want things to change. We don't want anybody to be better than us. But why are we persistently comparing ourselves to others when we should only worry about what God has in store for each and every one of us? What has God got in store for you? That's what you've got to ask yourself. Who are you in the Lord? And where do you need to be in the Lord? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Amen? Amen. And as we approach this season of Lent, the sheep generation, as many of you know, I've been in court supporting Joan this week. We've done week one. We've got another seven to go. Maybe less. But I saw something. And it was interesting yesterday when... Ricardo, isn't it? Jordan. Jordan. Jordan, sorry, your son. See? Can't remember the names. Jordan talked about the sheep generation. And I say, thank you, Lord. You were sent here for one purpose to tell me what to speak about today. The sheep generation. Well, you know something? I'm going to say it how it is. We are failing the sheep generation. We are not doing what we are supposed to be doing. Many of us as the ones who know better are trying to join them. The problem is I've seen it in action. One of the things with being in court, I saw CCTV footage up to an hour before the incident took place. It's been reported, so I'm not now saying anything that isn't there, but I'm not going to go into any detail. But the importance is I saw adults not being adults. It doesn't matter if you are of God or not. In society, you have adults and you have children. I saw adults behaving worse than the children. So how on earth are we expecting to go out and bring in the sheep if we are no better than them? How can we go out and bring in the sheep when there are no shepherds present? All the shepherds are there, but the shepherds are sitting down sleeping. Amen. Time to wake up. Time to wake up to the realization of what God has tasked us to do. And if we can't wake up, then we are dormant. Amen. Are you impotent or are you of God? And if you are of God, then you must get up and act. We forget where Jesus went. Jesus was never in the synagogue. Jesus was never sitting around with people who 
were okay. Jesus sat down with the sinners. He sat down with the prostitutes. Jesus sat down with um, people who, tax collectors, people who were scourged in society. That's who he sat down with. Because we are missing what Jesus wants. We are missing out rather on what Jesus tasked us to do. Remember, he paved the way. Yes. Amen? He paved the way for us. And the thing about it is, no matter how many choruses that we want to sing, how many songs we want to sing, how many times we want to shout, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Right? That's in here. Are we really doing what we're supposed to be doing out there to find that sheep generation? Amen? I hear many people say, you're doing this and you need to have young people involved. But I'm going to tell you today, you're going to involve young people. And us as the adults haven't got ourselves organized. Isn't it the blind leading the blind? If we the adults are no better than the young people, how can we involve them in what we're doing when we are no better than them? Come on now. And think about this. If you're no better than the sheep you are searching for, how can you find them? When you find them, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Our children, the last sheep, the sheep generation, need people to look up to. They need the positive role models. They need to do and follow what Jesus did. We're not talking about feeding the 5,000. We're not talking about, you know, healing the lepers. We're not talking about raising the dead. We're talking about setting the example. Jesus was never a theologian. A buzzword. I've done theology. You know, people sit down all day. One conversation they tried to have was, did Jesus have a child? I said, is that important? Is that all you can talk about? Is that, you know? Because I'm a person, I'll just say what I've got to say, get up and walk out. Because the facts are at the end of the day. If that is all that is important to you, then who are you really are? Amen? Amen. And one thing I will tell you today, Jesus wasn't sitting around talking about philosoph sorry, philosophical ideas. He wasn't around discussing theory. Jesus was out there and he was teaching people using objects and images that people see every day. Amen? Amen. That's what Jesus was doing. Yes. He, he was using seeds. Yes. He was using weeds. He was using trees. He was using fruits. He was using the land. He was using landowners. He was showing you what is in front of you so you appreciate what you have. Because if you don't appreciate what you have, you're never going to respect it. But that's what Jesus was doing. Sheep can be seen anywhere. I mean, all you gotta do is go up to Kirby if you see sheep. Yes. You know, who knows? You probably drive down as I was wrong, you see sheep as well. You just never know, do you? <laughs> you know, anything's possible. <laughs> the point is this. If you see sheep on the road, you will say to yourself, what's that sheep doing there? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. What do you do about it? You keep walking. Don't you? Yes. You keep walking and you keep walking and you keep walking. But when you go out to some place like Curdworth, I know there are sheep that in Curdworth. Curdworth is just when you go Kingsbury Road and you turn right out towards the M42, you go for an area called Curdworth, just behind Castle Bromwich and Castle Blair. The thing about it is, you go out there and you see sheep. All the sheep look pretty, you're not going to do anything because they're in the pen, aren't they? They're nice. But well, same time, people pass the sheep on the road and leave nothing. Come on now. In fact, you might even stop and admire the sheep in Curdworth in their beautiful pens. But they're not lost. But the one you see on the Zell's road, you do, that you walk past them. How many times have you walked past when you've seen a group of four or five young youths running at each other. How many times have you stood there and said, what are you doing? How many times have you said to them, why aren't you at home studying your book? We have to stop giving excuses, people. 
That's what we're doing. We give a lot of excuses. Turning a blind eye is no longer an option. Amen. And during the season of Lent, the challenge is, if you see the sheep generation going on to the other side, what are you going to do? Walk on by or ask them and take their abuse? The worst they're going to do to you is be abusive. Words. But what they do to each other is far worse. They kill each other. Amen. Amen. Today is that challenge. Today is that challenge. And many, many, you know, the sheep even in the countryside, when you go past them, you know, you see the farm owner, the shepherd, out there just making sure they got enough water, making sure they got enough. But they're in a nice, safe environment. But when you see them on the sales road, you just walk past and say, the sheep must eat here. How many say that? That's the most you do. Amen? It's a harsh reality of in the world in which we live today. Jesus welcomed the tax collectors. He ate with sinners. You know? But what Jesus did was, Jesus welcomed them. And remember, the Greek word, the Greek word for welcomes means to receive as a friend. Sitting down, breaking bread with one another. It means you welcome that person. It means that you receive them in love. Yes. Amen. Yes. And you sit down, you want to converse. Yes. This attitude was shown particularly to those who were lost in sin. Jesus befriended them. And by showing them love, he brought them back to God, which is very different to what the Pharisees did. Yes. Remember, the Pharisees existed about 200 years before Jesus. Yes. But they started off on a similar track. But by the time of Jesus, they resented Jesus because they said, who does he think he is? But whilst they said, who does Jesus think they is? They never one day took a stop and said, what have we become? Because their attitude was different. It was as though you're either with us or you're not. If you're not of us, you're of nobody. What they felt then was that they were greater than God. Amen? Remember at the time, you know, you got the old covenant where if you wanted to pray to God, you'd have to bring a sacrificial offering to the high priest. In the new covenant, we talk about your interpersonal relationship with God. Amen? So today, who are you? Who are you? Are you a Pharisee? Or are you of God? Because I will tell you this and I'll be challenged by it. The Pharisees, as far as I'm concerned, they started off being like of God. But they ended up being of themselves. How many of you today, and those of you who watch it, or who's going to re-watch this video as well, how many of you are of yourselves? You've got your heads buried so far up your posterior. You can't even see what's happening in front of you anymore. It's time for strong words. There's no longer time for money coggling. For all we know, because of man's greed and jealousy, we could be dead next week. Remember, man has developed weapons that can wipe us all out. So let me tell you something. Now is not just a time to pray. Now is a time to act because we need people of God that will find the new generation in positions of power like this stuff happening. Yes. Amen. World leaders running around right now. Yeah, they're going to stop your bank. Somebody coming in the bank account. I'm going to do this. No, oh, I'm going to fire two shots at him. No, no, no. I'm going to fire two shots. I'm going to two shots. I'm going to bang that one out. I'm going to blow up that building. I don't care who gets hurt. Doesn't it sound like what's happening in our street with some of the youngsters anyway? What example has been set? None. None. his life. He declared that God had been his shepherd all the days of his life to this day. 
23 speaks of the good shepherd. It speaks of the good shepherd. And it talks about the good shepherd laying his life down for his sheep. Today, people get executed in America still for murder. They used to hang people up until the last man at Winston Green Prison was hung in this country. It was a man from Jamaica, ironically, back in the 60s. However, what crime did Jesus commit? Did he murder anybody? Did he rob anybody? Did he rape anybody? The only thing Jesus was guilty of was speaking the truth. Let me say it again. The only thing Jesus was guilty of is speaking the truth. And do you know something? Because Jesus was crucified for speaking the truth. Do you know sometimes we are frightened of speaking the truth? Because we are frightened of who we will offend. But if we speak the truth, what a better word would it be? Because Jesus was already being crucified for speaking the truth. Therefore, he's paved the way for us to speak the truth. But we still have the inbuilt fear of speaking the truth. And although fear is a myth, we still Oh, no, want to speak the truth because we want to be popular. Amen. We want to be popular. We're reminded in John, I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me, even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay my life down for the sheep. Amen. Jesus describes both God as himself as the ones who know their flocks and whose flocks knows them. And his voice is in the, it's a midst of the images of the sheep. But remember, there's one constant thing. You and I are always the sheep. You and I are always the sheep. But remember, the most supreme court at the time, as a part of Sanhedrin, it was a supreme court of religious affairs and decision making for the Jews. And they felt threatened by the growing popularity, to coin a phrase of Jesus, his growing following, the ways in which he did things. And they just wanted to discredit him because, as he said, they said, Who is he? But remember, Jesus began. Remember, Jesus wanted to get rid of what the Pharisees started to create. And what did the Pharisees start to create? Them and us. Them and us. So you ask yourself a question today. Who are you? Who are you? Them and us doesn't work. There's no place in society for them and us. Mentally, do you know how we affect people mentally? by creating them and turning them to outsiders. We're not just setting them outside of us, we're pushing them away from God, amen? We're pushing them away from God, and what we need to be doing is bringing them in. Yeah. So when we see wrongdoing and we're walking past, we're pushing them away from God because we know better, but because they may shout at us, instead of telling them the truth, it's easier to walk on by, isn't it? Yeah. The story of the Good Samaritan, the most unexpected person to stop did, but who you thought would stop didn't. That's the issue that we have today, right? The other issue is this: we frown upon people. I'm not talking to him because I know speaking tones. He's not talking about him no speaking tones. I watched the service the other day, and I found it amusing. I heard somebody say, "Now we finished praying. Let's all now speak in tongues." And I burst out laughing. Because yeah. if you are of God, you don't invite people to speak in tongues. Your tongues will come when God has something to say to you. But what it was, it was just like I got up now and said, let's sing till soon be done. How does that work? I remember being in a service once where somebody said, the preacher said, if you want to know, be gifted with tongues, speaking in tongues, come up now, we'll pray for you, walk away speaking in tongues. 
Oh no, that we can speak in tongues. <laughs> the gift is given by God. Amen. God gives you that gift. Amen. God gives you the gift at the most unexpected moment. And you must receive that gift when you must be prepared to receive that gift when God gives it to you. No one can command God to give you a gift because the gift is from God and God is not going to give you with the identical gift that he gives you because we are all part, part of his body and we all have our roles to play. All of us can't be a little finger, all of us can't be a thumb. Amen. Amen? Amen? And that's the thing. Many of us want just to be, all of us want to be the leader. No one wants to be the follower. And everybody wants to be served and not to be of service. And remember, sinners are those who live, who are living outside the boundaries of the law of God, including the impurity, the, in the greedy, the thieves, the prostitutes, amongst others. They are living in sin. So what do you do? Come on now, what do you do today? We'll give you some example of people there. What are you going to do about it? Condemn them? Label them and continue labeling them? Or are you going to try to show them an alternative? And how do you show the alternative? I'm not going to talk to you until you give up prostitution. Is that the way? Is that the way? Or is it the way to say, listen, why are you doing this? I want to know. Listen. I'm going to listen. We got a nose. We got eyes. We got ears. We got a mouth. Amen. Amen. They're there for a purpose. Yeah. But are we using that, utilizing that purpose to God's glory? Amen. Are we showing love or are we showing judgment? Mm -hmm. That's the challenge. So as we go into this season of learning, let's not be gimmicky about, oh, I'm going to give up Pepsi, not myself first. Oh, I'm going to give up wheat. Oh, I'm going to give up bread. Because when bread done, you know, you're going to go back to eating the wheat. You're going to go back to eating the bread. Why not during the season of Lent, let us try to do what God has commanded us to do. When Jesus went into the wilderness, Jesus went into the wilderness to seek strength, to seek that challenge, to fast him. Walking through that, and remember, as you're fasting, you know, because you experience it. I experienced it with the Pepsi when I was gasping at night time. I get up, I just walk around the house saying, Lord, I need a little bit, man. Come on, you know what I mean? And then you got the wife there saying, Drink water, drink water. <laughs> that was it, person. Drink water. <laughs> but do you know something? Thank God for her because you know something. She made sure, you know what she did? She poured out four bottles of Pepsi down the sink. Yes. What a wicked woman! No, <laughs> Just imagine four bottles of Pepsi for that bad, isn't it? <laughs> but you know something? She was making sure yeah. that you stick to your guns. You do what God commanded you to do. Amen. 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 How many people are you helping to ensure that they are doing what God has commanded them to do? I look at our sister at the back. Our sister came in. Our sister gave her life to the Lord. I watched her. She came in. It's a good thing that Sasha and Joshua aren't here today because I have to be at the back doing what they do. And that's how you experience God as well, you know, because sometimes you have to do what others do to understand and appreciate what they do. But when she came in, our sister sat down and prayed. God bless you. That's a big, she's come far, hasn't she? Yeah. Let's give God thanks for that. When she came and she prayed. But remember, we have to remember what our life is like shepherds. Now you will say, Bishop is the shepherd. But is Bishop the only shepherd? Those of you who have given your life to the Lord in here, what are you doing? What are you? Are you not also shepherds? Because when you walk out there into a room of what are commonly known as sinners, for whatever reason, what are you? Jesus had his disciples. What were they? Were they not shepherds? Can you see now the importance of the role that God has given to each and every one of you? And what are we here to do today? Are we here just to worship and go home? Or are we here to be a power to go out and do the work that God has given each and every one to do? 
Every single morning when I go downstairs, our dogs are glad to see me. Because, number one, they want to go outside. Number two, they know I let them back in quickly, unlike everybody else in our house that leave them outside forever. Not quite. But, each of, the, each of us have our roles. That's the thing. So they see me as being the person that lets them out, brings them back in, and they see me as the person who eats the most. And they say, he will give us a bit of what we're eating. And that's what they do. They look to me, and they say, right, where's mine? <laughs> and my wife will tell you, I go out and I buy KFC, you know, and there's two pieces of chicken in there for the dogs. Because they're part of the family. Get what I'm driving at? We are all family. So we must share what we have amongst the family. So when we see the dog, when we see the sheep generation out there, they are an extension of our family. Are we prepared to feed them? Are we prepared to converse with them? Are we prepared just to sit and listen to them? But then again, some will say, how do you pitch that conversation? Because some people go and say, right, God commands you to do this. You don't need to say that. You just go and talk to them on a level. And when you speak to them on a level, let them see the godliness come out in you. Because they will see the difference in you. So the challenge is today is a simple one. Are you prepared to be extensions of the Good Shepherd? Are you? Or are you prepared just to carry on thinking of just yourself? And then when something goes wrong, what do we do? We just, we just say, oh well, that's life. And if we're going to say that's life, then who are we in the Lord? We need to remember what it's like to be helplessly lost. It's your journey. Every single, who, who believes that they were born found? Come on now. Who? Who believes they were born lost? I do. I was lost. Because I was lost in a world that I saw. But I found Jesus. Amen. 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 You found Jesus. But whether or not you're hiding inside or hiding behind the racks in a store just to emerge when no one is looking or you're lost in the midst of a crowd, we know what it's like to be lost. But, and you're there losing all hope. But do you know something? Whose eyes are upon you? Whose eyes are upon you? Who's watching over you? Are we reminding our youngsters who's watching over them? Are we reminding some of our adults who are no better than our young people? Are we reminding them of their responsibility? Where are you to be? Where am I to be? That's what we've got to ask ourselves. What we need is restoration of order in our society. Amen. We need the adults Amen. to be the adults. We need the children to be the children. Hurry, go come up, don't work. Hurry, go come up is not long, has no longevity. And one of the things I decided this week, and my wife was quite nervous when I said it, it's now no nonsense, Bishop. Got no time for foolishness. No time. Time is short. One thing during this time of COVID and this season of COVID, we've seen people here today, then they get a phone call, they're gone, they're gone. They're gone. The time we spend firefighting with foolishness, we could be doing more constructive stuff. The time we spend helping our brothers and sisters, we could be doing more, more important stuff. The time I spend trying to preach better than Pastor Val. It's foolishness! Because our pastor about preach is not the way I'm supposed to preach. The way Pastor Sheena preach is not how I should preach. The way in which Deacon Keith preaches or does his poetry. But even his poetry is not for me because I don't write it. So why am I going to try and copy what he does? But put us all together! Put us all together, what do you get? You get something special. Amen. Amen? You get something special. First lady is there, she wanted to sing praise and worship many years ago. I'm going to talk about her testimony. 
but she was stopped. She was stepped upon. She was told at times, no, 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 you're not cutting it. But then somebody said, come, come. And she's grown and she's grown and she's grown. Amen. Amen. Many actually said, when we were doing the services at home on Zoom, they said, why would she buy beside you? You know why? She's my wife, so sometimes, you know, wife and husband see you say something, and the wife says, no, so the wife will look at you for me. So we say, what are you doing? I'm sure you two do it as well. And I'm sure many others do it. Pastor Bob, I'm sure in the past she did it as well. Each and every one of us, Pastor Sheena, everybody's done it. But people weren't listening to the word that was picking up sometimes, and all my wife look at me. <laughs> Why don't you let me that for? So she said, I'm not coming back on there. Because you know why? People try to push their negativity. Yes. In every single negative experience you have in life, there is a positive Amen. moment. Yes. No one wants to cling to that positive moment, but they want to cling to the negative moment. Yes. Amen? Today, learn to be strong. Amen. Learn to be bold in the and when the negative statements come, yeah. laugh at the negative yes. statements. But give God thanks. Do you know why? Because those making the negative statements about you are watching what you are doing. Yes. Therefore, right back to the beginning, when you see the sheep on the south road, who is stopping you from saying, why are you here? You are. Because you have fear of being criticized, fear of being cursed, but by showing love. Yes. You're committing sin by ignoring, but by asking, you're actually expressing God's love. Yes. Amen. So what do we need to do today? We've got this sheep generation. It's quite simple what we have to do. is be people of God. Amen. Amen. No, nothing else, no one else, people of God. And remember, we have a community of shepherds. There is a one. There's no high priest anymore. I may be bishop, but I am not high priest. I can't give you access to the kingdom of heaven. Pastor, how's our pastor? She can't give. Pastor, she is our pastor. She can't give. And one of the pastors I always feel to forget because he's away is Pastor Moses. Pastor Moses can't give you access to the kingdom of heaven. Bishop, I can't preside. I can't give you access to the kingdom of heaven. We can help you on the journey. We can empower you. We can sit with you. We can pray with you. We can love you. We can nurture you. But ultimately, if we are not playing our part, then we're the ones committing the sin, not you. Because we always tell people, say, it's like I remember somebody said to me, they're baptized, and I cannot stop drinking beer. And I said to them, what's wrong with drinking beer? I overindulge. I said, right. So we got to get you down to indulge, mm -hmm. then occasional, mm -hmm. and then whenever. Mm -hmm. They said, what do you mean? I thought you'd be cursing me because mm -hmm. I'm still drinking. I said, you know, you're cursing yourself because you recognize that you need to change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not for me to judge anybody. It's for you to actually recognize that you need a change in your life. Amen. All I'm there to do is to help encourage you on that journey. Amen. So today, in closing, so what are we going to do? Is finding the lost the most important thing in our lives for God? But do we have the compassion? The burden is great. The burden, though, isn't just great upon us. It's great upon the sheep generation because they are looking for direction. Yes. They are seeking direction. But the only thing is they go elsewhere for that direction because we ain't got time for them because we show them no attention. Because you know what? We say, oh, they're my youth, man. They've gone already. They've been stealing. They've still killed them one and now that's it. Is that what we want to do? Is that what God wants us to do? Is that what makes us people of God? Because I tell you this today, it does not make us people of God. What level are you willing to go to and risk 
to bring them in. Remember, we talked about when you see the sheep on ourselves wrong, you don't want to go to them because the sheep may cuss you, or even them, because they sheep like me, sheep may jump up and buck I remember sheep do buck. So you're frightened of when they come up from a sheep? Are you frightened of that? If you do it in the right way, the sheep ain't gonna buck you. If you do it in the godly way, the sheep ain't gonna buck you. But are you prepared to do that? Are you prepared to bring them in? We sang bringing in the sheep. Nobody said, not prayer for the sheep to come in. Bring. 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 How many of you today are prepared to do the action of bringing in the sheep? Are you willing to pull out all the stops? And even say, and invite the sheep in? Every single one of us are of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some get lost. And it's our duty to bring them back. Yes. But ultimately, the challenge this morning is this. In terms of the lost generation and peer power and the sheep generation, mm. are we of God or are we of the Pharisees? That's the challenge. Are we of God or are we of the Pharisees? And are our sheep generation untouchable? That's the question. This is what God has told me to deliver to you today. And as we go into this season of Lent, we don't necessarily have to be looking at giving up bread, giving up Pepsi, giving up fried dumpling, giving up ackee and selfish. We don't need to be doing that. What we need to be doing is focusing upon using the gift that God has given us to bring souls to the kingdom. Amen. That's what we need to be doing. And that's all we need to be doing. Amen. Wednesday night, those of you who want to join us, 7.30, we're going to be in this hall and we're going to be praying and empowering each other to go on an almighty journey that you've never been on before. Be prepared for that. I remember, um, I remember, because my wife was Mary Kay, I remember they have seminar every year, and I remember they showed videos, and I went to one of them when Mary Kay Ash was alive, and what did she say? Be ready for the greatest, what was it? Sorry? The greatest time or greatest day of your life? That's what she said. Well, get ready for the greatest journey of your life during this season of Lent. Because we are going to make the changes. We are going to bring souls to the kingdom. We are going to show the sheep generation the way, the truth, and the life. And we are going to break loose of the fear of seeking man's approval over God's approval. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to journey together. And we're going to build God's kingdom and we're going to change lives. We're going to find that sheep generation. And we're going to bring them into the house of the Lord. And we're going to bring them in as they are. Yes. 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 So get yourselves ready. We've got the work to do. And let's get on with that work. God bless you. Amen. Worship team. We're going to... As you become a minister to us, and today as you minister, what I want you to do is, what has been said today, it needed to be said. It needed to be said. Because others are out there getting through in a negative way to the sheep generation. And we and we consider them to be untouchable. Mm -hmm. And we consider them to be untouchable because many of us think we're Pharisees. We are not. We are of God. Turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. And everything's gonna be alright. Oh
to our doubts and our ups and downs, your Holy Spirit is always there for us, Lord. Never leave us or forsake us, Lord. Your Holy Spirit is always there.
don't get it right. Mm -hmm. And we don't get it the right way around. But Lord, we are just people. Mm -hmm. Lord, you have the final say yes. in everything that we do. Yes. But just to know you more yes. is more pleasing to me. Yes. Amen. To know that every word that we speak yes. and every word that you gave us mm -hmm. are comforted, encouraging words of the gospel of God. Yes. So we give thanks that we can lean on that word. Yes. To nurture us, to teach us, to humble us. Yes. To know that we can be free and be free indeed. Amen. So I thank you, Lord, for life in this yes. room today. Yes. We thank you for the brother that gave his life to you today. Amen. That nothing is impossible Amen. for you to do. That like you can do for me, that you can do for them. Yes. So Lord, as we just pray that you bind us together in one accord. Yes. Amen. That when we go out today, yes. and we go back out into our homes and to the world, yes. we will take the knowledge that you have given us today. Yes. Use it to yes. equip us yes. for our families and our families beyond. Yes. Yes. Lord, we pray for all the funerals and the lost ones this week. Yes. We lift up your praying. Yes. Lord, and we'll never leave them. Yes. Lord, yes. Yes. But you know you have the final say. Amen. Victory is mine, says the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Lord, you said you will fight every battle. Yes, yes. yes. And the battle is yours, I yes, say. Lord. Yes, Yes. We lift them, all those children. Yes, yes. Lord. Lord, but you're going to cover them with your blood. We cover them with your blood today. Yes. Yes. The crown of their head to the soul of their feet. Let them walk in victorious. Yes. Lord, we know they know that they trust yes. you. And they will fight on. And let's have the good fight in the Lord today. Yes. Heavenly Father, have your way in this today, Lord. We pray for traveling mercies as we go home. For each every one of us, Lord, in one accord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, your Son, yes. the precious Son that you left with us, that we could have mm -hmm. everlasting life. We thank you, Lord. And as we turn to each other and say, Amen. 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 And receive it today.